In this video, Mike Weaver is going to show us how to create an application access policy to use with Exchange Web Services. Over to you, Mike. In today's example, I'm going to be creating an app registration and doing an application access policy against this app registration to scope down access for an EWS application, Exchange Web Services. This is really helpful for companies that are going through a merger, acquisition, or divestiture, or an application that only needs access to a certain number of mailboxes. Before this support, which is only released in February of 2021, you had to give access to all mailboxes if you're using a modern authentication scenario instead of using a basic auth ID, which we all know are bad and we're all trying to ban from the planet as much as we can. So this is a really good enhancement that a lot of us have been waiting for and we're excited to see it here. If you have an application that requires you to give EWS access and you can scope it down, you should check the application documentation for further guidance. If you want to create this at home, you will need a certificate. You can do this on any Windows box and uh, just export it if you want to. Uh, so certainly for what you're doing today in a lab, that would be sufficient. You'll need PowerShell with the Exchange Online module installed. And you'll need an admin account that can create a mail-enabled security group, an application access policy, and create an app registration in Azure. This is a uh, global admin certainly can do this, or probably a variety of other IDs if you're working in a production environment. Obviously, for this testing, you should be in a lab environment, so probably you'll have a GA account that will have this function. Let's go ahead and hop in. Let's go ahead and first create the mail enabled security group. And the example that I'm using today, we're going to create this mail enabled group, and anyone in this group will be accessible via the application. So, again, if a user is in this group, that mailbox can be accessed by the application, not the other way around. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and go in the Exchange Admin Center, go to Groups. The easiest way to create a mail enabled security group is to hit the little down arrow and go ahead and create it here. And I am going to call this the Toso MIG Users Group. So my idea here is this is for a merger acquisition or divestiture, and these are the accounts that are in play. I'm going to keep that here. For in production, we would go ahead and create a notes section, and I can go ahead and use the default options here. I go ahead and open up this group. I can add a user. So I'm in it by default because I'm the person who created it. But I'll go ahead and create or add another user in here just for our example. Okay, and I'll go ahead and add Andrea Anderson to the group. Great. The next step is we need to create an application registration. Go to your Azure portal. And let's find app registrations. And I'm going to go ahead and create a app registration. If you do have a URI that you want to put in, I'm just going to use localhost for this example. In production, you probably want to use a uh, the actual URL. But that's what I'm going to use here for our example. I need a certificate that we mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that certificate now. Great. And now I need to give certain permissions. So I'm going to give EWS permissions in the API section. So go to API permissions, add a permission. This has recently been changed, and the goal is to actually stop getting, start getting off of EWS, uh, which certainly is going to be way down the road. But to get to EWS, it used to be down here. Now you've got to go into the APIs my organization uses, Office 365, Exchange Online, Application Permissions. And you'll see the top one is Full Access as an App, which is EWS Access. And hit Add Permission. At this point, if I go ahead and choose Grant Admin Consent, it will grant access to, for EWS in my environment, to all mailboxes. We're in a lab, so we're going to go ahead and hit this now. If you're not in a lab environment, you may want to go create the app policy and then come back. It really depends how concerned you are. Uh, certainly where we're creating these, it, it 
that may be a, a little bit overkill where we're, we're going to create this right away. So I've gone ahead and done that. You will need the app ID for this next command. So I'm going to go ahead and capture that now. Okay, let's go ahead and open PowerShell. Great, now we're gonna to connect to Exchange Online to create the new app access policy. So I've already imported the module and let's go ahead and connect. And log in. Okay, and now we are connected. So I've gone ahead and pasted the command here. So I have put in the app ID from earlier and also the group and note in the access right that we're restricting access. So that is very important that you understand that you've got things going in the right direction. So you get what you want here and that's it. So we have noticed it takes about sometimes 15, 20 minutes for everything to fully work here but then you're off to the races and you can go ahead and test it. It's always important for these kind of security policies, if, especially if you're using a data access application, you should test users that are inside and outside of the group and be sure that access is being controlled before turning over to production. Thanks, Mike. And for more information, check out the link below in the description for Vazil's blog to show you the detailed step-by-step -step instructions.